But in the meantime, um, people have been conditioned for a different way of looking at things. And, you know, we've got two years now where people have spent time, and I don't, I don't think this is the same in the United States, but here in Australia, in almost every state as I'm aware of it, um, people are required to check in using a QR code wherever they go. So if you go to fill up your car with petrol, you bring your phone and you scan the QR code and you check in and your data then gets registered in a central database that is held by the government. And then when you leave, um, you know, you walk out, you go to the next shop, you do the same thing. So for example, people that have been Christmas shopping might have QR code checked into 10 shops in a day and a half. Um, and then the idea is that, of course, if someone's COVID positive in that area, you get notified and you know, into quarantine you go, sometimes into one of these many hotels that we'll talk about as well. I don't think that's a phenomenon that the United States has experienced. But here in Australia, people are now used to it. They look for the code. Um, and the conditioning to accept this kind of um, soft power totalitarianism is now firmly getting ingrained in Australia's DNA. And, and I think that's really worrying. I'm, I'm worried that people aren't more worried about it, frankly. I mean, there, is, there, are, there are some that are, but people like myself who make these statements get accused of being, um, you know, sort of conspiracy theorists or whatever you might call it. Um, but I think the trajectory on this, if it's not arrested, is really bad. I worry about this sort of persuasive social credit style system that we can see coming in. Um, and there's a number of examples of that. South Australia, in fact, my home state, um, the health bureaucracy here are the, the authors of the Home Quarantine app, which is, a, um, in my view, a dreadful piece of software which sits on your phone. Um, and the rationale for it was that instead of being quarantined somewhere else, you can buy your freedom by agreeing to sign up to this app. Um, and it, it contacts you three times a day. It requires you to show a picture of your face or live stream your face. It takes the GPS data from that. It triangulates that information and sends it back to police headquarters uh, and confirms that you're at home where you said you'd be at home. Um, and if you're not, then you get a knock on the door from the police. Now, uh, people seem to have accepted that in this country as being, oh, well, that's terrific. That means I don't have to go into a, a MIDI hotel, which is a detainment facility here. Um, and it's sort of almost a way of buying your freedom back. Well, you know, I would say to that, my freedom is not something the government gives me. It's, it's you know, as it should be in the United States and as it should be here, it's, it's an inalienable right. Uh, so we've become very conditioned to accepting the unacceptable over the last two years. And I think that's really the, the, the difficulty we're going to face is winding that back and winding back these ideas from a bureaucracy that never has to face up to an electorate. Nobody who came up with that idea is ever going to have to justify it in front of a ballot box.